I'm Florian Pappenberger, Director of Forecasts. And this presentation is the final presentation of Cycle 47R2, which is implement, in, imminent to be implemented. Um, I have to apologize a bit during the meeting. Um, I've got a bit of hay fever today, um, so I'm, I'm sneezing and sniveling a bit. Um, so I'm sorry for that. Um, the new cycle, 47R2, um, implementation line timeline you see here, um, what you see there, the initial announcement was on the 15th of August, and there were actually already two preceding webinars given by Andy Brown, Director of Research, um, sort of beginning of December to give you more detail on the science elements of that one. And if you go to our websites, you can actually find them on there. 47R2, um, the system was frozen since the start of the release calendar on the 9th of February. Um, a full set of test data um, is available for the new cycle. Um, they are generated daily and shortly behind real time from the high resolution and your ensemble runs based on your operational designation requirements. Um, and they're already available um, in easy charts. Um, and ENS metagrams are also already available on the website for you to compare visually if you want to do so. Um, implementation date is still set for the 11th of May. And we are now fairly certain that it will be the 11th of May. Um, and the first cycle, which will, the first, the first forecast, which will include this new cycle, um, is the 0600 UTC one. Despite Andy having given already a very detailed presentation, and I really recommend go back because he's going to go far more, far more, um, intric intricate into, into what happened in this cycle. I'm just going to give you a very quick overview to set the context. Cycle 47R2 is a cycle which is um, de facto cost neutral for us in implementation. And that has to do with, on the one hand, saving computing computational costs through the implementation of single precision. And on the other hand, um, the thing which then, of course, costs is an increase in the, in the ensemble um, number of levels um, from 91 to 137, which brings the ensemble in line um, with the with the high resolution. Just to quickly to reinforce, um, of course, the implementation of the single precision is de facto a neutral impact in terms of forecast scores. Say it's computing time, as I said, the increase in the ensemble is a positive impact on the ensemble scores. Very, very quick slide in single precision. Um, again, these go back to Andy's presentation or to the papers which are actually published on the website. Um, this idea goes back a bit now. Um, it really was based on a research project done together with Oxford University, um, our AI coordinator Peter Düben, um, and our ECMWF or former ECMWF fellow Tim Palmer. Um, it was tested first in OpenIFS, and there's some nice papers on this one. Um, it was now really introduced into the IFS as part of the forecast. Um, the work was carried out in close collaboration between um, us and Meteor France, which also tested successfully the use of single precision in global simulations. This, as I said, on the, on the right-hand side, you see sort of see the box in terms of, 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 of change in medium runtime. So you can see you actually do quite significant savings on this one um, if you go to single precision. Um, you can see here minus 11% in comparison to a 91 level one. And that really allowed us to introduce multiple levels. Um, I'm putting up this picture mainly to sort of, um, sort of remind you that um, introducing multiple levels always does cause some more work um, for people who use our forecast in particular in terms of limited area modeling. Um, there's a more detailed comparison. Again, go to our website and have a look between 91 and 137 levels and gives you a bit more detail. Um, you can see um, what has changed um, and where it has changed. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Of course, the reason why we do all this um, is simply to have a nice and new scorecard. Um, the ECMWF scorecard is now published on the website. Um, you have here two different colors. Everything which is sort of blue is great. Um, everything which is red has deteriorated slightly. What you have on the on the top part, and I don't know whether I can actually activate my pointer. Oh, where is it? 
So everything which you have up here um, on the left side, this is like a verification against analysis. Everything which is dark gray here is and then against observations. Down here, you've got different regions, Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, and Tropics in this particular example. Um, and then you've got the root mean squared error, CRPS, and the spread in here. Um, if you go to our website, you can actually click on every single dot and you can actually see how it looks in temporal evolution. So you can have a far more detailed um, look at this one. The ensemble core card uh, is, mainly, is mainly blue, indicating improvements. Um, there's a rather small negative impact for the geopotential in the stratosphere. Um, and um, the impact in summer is a bit more positive in winter. And um, you can see that the high resolution hasn't really changed much in that sense. Um, just to sort of reassure, reassure you, um, the relative changes of the CRPS for all variables and lead times um, in comparison, first on, on the bottom, you have single precision versus double precision. And of course, as I said before, I sort of would expect nothing um, and we get nearly nothing, um, which is great. Um, so there's not really any significant change due to interaction of single precision. Whereas on the top, you have the um, showing the difference uh, in, in uh, the, the the start of the um, increased model level. Sorry, I'm losing it. Um, and you can actually look here in the histogram quite neatly. There's a significant number of improvements. If we look at something else a bit more detailed, tropical cyclones um, sort of becoming of interest now, of course. We had just the tropical cyclone activity forecasts um, published in the US, um, I think last week roughly. Um, the performance of the tropical cyclone tracks is neutral, um, spread tends to be unchanged, and um, the intensity bias for deeper systems is reduced and the, and the spread is decreased. So there's some neutral impact and then some positive impact. And just to demonstrate you this positive impact, here's the case study of the tropical cyclone Laura um, in um, August 2020. Um, here you can see the, on the left hand side, you can see the track of 47R1. On the right hand side, 47R2. So this one is the current system. The right hand side is the, is the new system. Um, and then underneath, you see the mean sea level pressure um, evolution. Um, what we saw in the last slide is sort of exemplified in this case. Um, blue pressure bars are getting closer to the reported minimum, seat, minimum central pressure. Um, there's no question we still have a way to go. Um, it's going to take a while um, to get even better. Let's just have a quick look in the extended range. These are all updated graphs of all the data we have. We tend to update the graphs um, on a, on a relatively frequent basis um, on the internet. So you always have, um, the moment we have more results and the moment it's worth publishing, we sort of add it. Um, here you see this sense of the old minus the, uh, the new minus the old cycle. Um, for the um, multivariate martin julian oscillation index based on reforecast um, at the start of each month for a period from 1989 to 2016. The differences um, are shown for uh, the first one here is the FAIR CRPS, so FRCRPS, the FAIR CRPS. Then you have um, correlation, root mean squared error, spread amplitude, amplitude and, and phase in the end. Um, the triangles indicate an increase when they point up. The, if they're not pointing up and pointing down, then they sort of indicate a decrease. Um, and the shaded, the darker shades when they're um, significant. I think what you sort of can see from this scorecard quite neatly is that um, the Martin Julian oscillation is better sustained due to the extended range. So the amplitude rose by 15 days, so 15% rather than previously 20%. Um, there's an increased spread, um, and the changes come mostly from improvements in the tropical solar winds at 200 hectopascal. So that's sort of the sort of the recap of the latest performances. Um, of course, what's also quite important for many of you is what new parameters we are getting, what new model outputs we are adding, um, and there we added quite a few. And I'm gonna gonna show you now a quite um, long list in that sense. Um, Surface parameters added for the high res is um, two meter specific humidity. Um, there's a upgrade, a, a upgrade for the ensemble for two meter scientific humidity is 
plant later if I read this correctly, but I may be corrected by my colleagues here. Um, and then we also added our graphic parameters to the ensemble control forecast. They're not really any new parameters, they sort of existed before, um, but I think now um, they're quite useful for you to have them too. Um, in addition, we added um, radiation parameters to the ensemble forecast, again only for step zero, so not really new, they've always existed, but they weren't really accessible very well. Um, a lot of them will be interesting in particular, um, as you can see, most of them are radiation related. Um, people who use radiation in particular for, for step zero. Um, these are just new parameters. Hopefully some of them will be useful you, for you. Some of them we can um, use already. Um, more important and um, where you take, need to take a bit more care is actually an update to the tropical cyclone drugs, um, in particular for the highest endio, for the highest endio ensemble. Um, so we introduced the tropical cyclone drugs for the 600, run. Um, with that, and there was an inconsistent decoding of the buffer header. Just to remind you, the tropical cyclone runs are actually available for free and open on the internet, so you can download those data um, yourself. Um, there's an FTP site or an FTP link on the website, and you can get the buffer data without any um, open source license. Um, so the ensemble forecast type key, um, I'm not going to read out the buffer descriptor for this one now. Um, contains now the correct information for different um, um, member forecasts. Um, and there was an issue in particular when only um, one member is present. Um, you need to update your software in order to decode them properly. Um, on the website, you'll find more details. You shouldn't have any problem if you would use the right software versions. Um, we also um, changed some other elements in that, which you see on this website. I'm not going to go through them in too much detail, to be fair. Um, my only reoccurring warning is take care when you encode them and make sure that you can encode, uh, decode the new um, buffer files correctly. I sort of already mentioned it. Um, all of this will be no problem um, if you use the new default versions of the software which is provided to you. Um, you can download this software from GitHub um, or if you're using the EZMWF platform, You'll find those software platforms being um, available and the default versions across all of our platforms. Um, I just put in here the major packages, Easy Code, Matrix, and MedView, um, depending on what you what you use. Um, however, really update them if you want to use the new parameters introduced in 47R2. You can't do otherwise. Um, and just install the software already now. It's backward compatible to the last cycle, um, so you can install before that. Again, there's a detailed block entry. Um, have a have a look at the block entry, um, which also should help you to install if you have to. I already mentioned that the main feature of the or one of the main features of the cycle, the metallurgical feature, is the upgrade of the model levels. Um, I'm sort of 100% aware that every time we upgrade model levels, um, there is a potential for for um, downstream applications having uh, having issues. Um, you, we know we need to be really careful, and I really ask you to check beforehand. Um, model level changes can impact your results, as you all know. Um, don't assume that everything works just automatically. Um, to give you sort of some sort of some sort of um, timeline before the implementation day and the day after, one day before the implementation, so on the 10th of May. Well, all requirements for operations will be frozen from 9 UTC, so no changes are possible anymore. Um, the last cycle modifications, which will have an impact or you can do are on the 600 run. Um, so if you have any modifications, please don't do them around in the implementation day. Um, on the 11th of May, for the 600 runs, so or for the first run, um, the existing ensemble model levels and operating will be mapped to the corresponding levels. Um, there's no other changes which will be allowed on the 11th of May. So if you want to change your requirements on the 11th of May, forget it. Um, requirements in the test system will not be ported to operation. So two things. A, remember we will map those levels automatically. You still need to check. Um, B, um, the requirements, you cannot change the requirements. One day after implementation, so on the 12th of May, um, we will reopen the requirements at 10, 10 UTC. Um, and then can apply changes to 12 UTC. Any changes from the E-suite 
to be applied in operations need to be requested or ported manual from the 12th of May onwards. Um, the e-suite will then close on the 28th of May. Um, mapping. Yes, so mapping is important. Of course, we will do some automatic mapping um, for you or for people or for individuals. Um, and you can see it can see it on here. Um, you can test this mapping already because it's in the e-suite. So if you want to test how well we've mapped them and whether they're fine for you, just take the e-suite data. Um, just to show you sort of example how the automatic mapping worked, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go on on this one um, until you promise me to check basically. Um, here you see the automatic which mapping which has been done. Of course, you can see that there's differences. That's natural if we include, if you increase the number of model levels. Um, the test kind of phase started 9th of February 2021. Um, for users um, with ensemble model level data and dissemination, automatic was done from 91 to 137. No new model levels were added. You should see no increase in volumes with the existing mapping. After level mapping, you will not get exactly the same pressure levels. It will be very close. Um, and you can see this on the slide. They will be very close, but they're not the same. So if you have taken, let's say, taken level 90, you can see there's a pressure level of 1009.1459 um, down here. You will be mapped to level 136, which has a pressure level which has a slight difference in those two. Um, please check, please check. Again, please check. Um, there's a website to that um, giving you exact details. Mapped levels will not have the same pressure levels, therefore please test. I think I've got on about this now long enough um, to hopefully encourage all of you to have at least a look. Um, we always know that when we introduce increased model levels, um, some of our users um, have issues and something goes wrong and therefore we're really keen for you to check that beforehand. Um, as I said before, um, of course mapping is one thing, checking the data is another thing. Um, you can actually look in easy charts and the ensemble meteogram in easy charts. Um, you will find them here and the slide is now a bit, bit small, um, but there's basically here a small number here, 0075, and you find most products or probably nearly all products um, which have a sort of also a small, um, which have basically two products in them. One of them is the normal one, the other one is 0075. And you can sort of toggle between those two and see how they look like um, with the different um, model levels and with different model inc increased resolution. This is available since the 6th of April. Um, and as I said, all layers are, are marked as eSuite 0075. Um, so you should be able to quite easily um, find and look for your favorite parameters and compare to those. Um, the same is possible um, on the ensemble meteogram where you can do exactly the same. And here you can see that the model run is indicated here and you can just look for the new model cycle and can look for your particular station, what the difference, what the difference is. Um, that just gives you a visual impression. If you find anything which is odd, please contact us so we can investigate. Again, this presentation is mainly to hopefully encourage more questions, but also in order to really say, keep testing release kind of software. Implementation date to be reminded is on the 11th of May. We will publish all updates on this website. You can either type in this very long name or you can just type in 47R2 and ESMWF into your preferred search engine. I promise you it comes up first, bit of an odd combination. Um, we don't send many emails. Um, if you want to see what's happening, please hit the watch button on the website, um, which is up here, um, or watch the website with any other of your favorite tools. Um, this is all I had to say from this presentation. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy the new cycle, and I hope you're going to enjoy using it.